Okay, all important bait choice now. We're both going nice, simple route for the bomb and the waggler. We're doing eight mil pellets, aren't we, mate? Yep, definitely nice, and nice simple. big, dense eight mil pellets, aren't we? Nothing to complicate anything. Lots of noise to attract the fish. Now, method-wise, we're doing something a little bit different. I've always put all my faith in sort of 50-50 ground bait and micros. Now, one of the most important things to remember when you get to your peg is make sure you do your ground bait first. So, basically what I'm gonna do, dry ingredients, I'm gonna put sort of half a bag of them in. And I'm gonna put half a bag of this in. Any fish meal really works. And colorings, it's it's one of them with colorings, isn't it, Jay? Um, personal thing, isn't it? It's personal preference. Personally, I don't think it makes a, a blind bit of difference. I think it's the, the, the flavorings and that. I think fish meal makes a difference. Yeah, possibly. Whereas colorings, I don't know, maybe if it's like really clear, you want to darken it down a bit. But I mean, I've seen the state of the colour of this one, mate. Yeah. Can't see your hand green, you just put it in there in inches, mm. can I, you? I like to go with subtle-ish colours. I don't like anything too vivid. I mean... Vivid, vivid. Dead Let's bright. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for knowing it down, mate. But yeah, I like something <laughs> subtle. I don't like any luminous oranges or anything like that. But I like a greeny brown or like a... Not light browns, nice. You just it? complicate everything, man. Stop it. Just let me get on with my mix already. <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> right, so mixes, yes. Yeah. So dry ingredients in first. Don't prepare your micros first because they're all sponging and start floating and all this. So get them in first and then we're just going to put a little bit. This is just lake water. Obviously, at this stage, you can put any additives that you want in, but you know, again, it's one of them. It's just what you've got confidence in. So we're going to put a bit of that in there, mix that round. Now, what I want to do, you see, it's very over wet. Now, obviously, the micros are going to absorb a lot of that water. So make sure it's really over wet to start with. And then what you want to do, sort of like 15, 20 minutes time, come back to it and it'll have dried out a bit. I'm going to bring it back to sort of just less than, than that consistency. I don't obviously want it that wet yeah. for when I'm going to fish it. But when I come back to the mix, I'm going to add a little bit more water to it, get it nice and damp. And the beauty of these micros is you don't need to drill or anything. You don't need to riddle it. The micros will help break all the lumps up. It's absolutely brilliant. So that's all mixed up nice and quick. Nothing difficult about that. So I'm going to come back to that in about 20 minutes. Now, Jay um, does something a little bit different when you're fishing the method, don't you, mate? Often, mate, yeah, yeah, with a method feeder. So we'll talk about feeders at the end. The yeah, feeders definitely, we've got some feeders out there. But yeah, I'd say my preferred mix is probably just pellets. I definitely like a, a ground bait and pellet mix like you've got for me smaller fish. Right, okay. and skimmers. But whatever, so, I'm after just carp, I definitely prefer... I, I've always found, Jay, the reason I put the ground bait in is you've got the ground bait to instantly attract the fish. And then what my theory is, whether it's right or not, I don't know. Well, that's why we're here, potatoes. Uh, you've got the micros left once you hook a fish to keep fish in your peg. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, we've all had it, that, that problem when you're just feeding micros is the fish getting too preoccupied on the bait, aren't you? Possibly, you know, yeah. little tiny baits and sinking into the silt. So it'll be really interesting today to see how you, how you approach yeah, it. Different. That, your feeders have got to come into it a lot more to, to get your bait to do the right thing. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll touch in a minute. For me, Say micro is easy. I've, I've talked about it before in one of the old map videos where I used to like fishing um, a combination of two pellets, a combination of coarse pellets and uh, Coppins pellets, which are a very sticky binding pellets. I used to use them to control the breakdown rate of my feeder. Right, okay. Now I do things a little bit different. So we'll oh, talk. dare you be controversial, Jay? <laughs> so it's not controversial. If, if I was to still fish a method feeder, that's what you do. I'd do exactly the right. same thing. Sound. But, so I know, um, sorry, I didn't you, mate. I know back in the day you used to put like powder on it and all that, didn't you? And oh, we used to do all sorts of things, mate, didn't we? Just to try and get them to break the time. Down. But Just it, get it out of a bag and chuck it in, mum. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the, um, the main area that people go wrong with a method or a feeder in general is that they think that they need a, a nice bed of pellets broken down right. with a, a hook bait on top as quickly as possible. Right. Okay. Where, in all honesty, that's possibly the worst thing you can have because the fish get a lot of options around the area to feed then. Right. Instead of so being you're frustrated. controlling the breakdown, aren't you? Yeah, I want, yeah, I want it to clever. break down or to be maintained in a pile that I want it to be so I get a bite as quickly as possible just to limit the options for a fish. Right. So they're nice, straight mate. in and I get a bite rather than my pellets be all over the place and spread in a nice big area. Yeah. And they can feed all around it. See, that, that's my pile like that, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the ground. That's His tip goes round straight away. Man's like, ah, come on, go round. It is. But yeah, for me, dead simple with pellets. And right, simply, nice, so they're, they're ones I've just done. Yeah. But it, it can't be easy. It's literally, I just want to cover me. They're just normal. Since you've shown me this, mate, this is all I do. What I, know, what I used to do was like soak them like that, leave it sort of two, three minutes and drain all the water off. Yeah. But since Jay's shown there's, us this way, There's no way, need to, easy. is there? So that's no. just got a little bit too much. I'm just going to get rid of it. I just want to just cover my pellets. So then they're nearly sticking out. So they're just covered and you leave them. And it's mad how they just come too. It's brilliant. They, they just go, go like perfect. That, as long as you, the, the batch of pellets everywhere at the moment is beautiful. It's just me bag and course ones. I can leave them. I can make them as sticky and as tight as I want. Proper, mate. Just by leaving them alone. 
And what about sort of uh, hook bait? I mean, obviously we're coming to hook baits when, we, when you see us fishing on our swims and that. Um, are you a, a fan of sort of like the traditional baits, maggots or I'm a massive oilies, believer that the type of hook bait is nearly irrelevant. It, yeah. it's the, you proved it before, haven't you? you know, when definitely. You just got a bare hook back into the mix and yeah, your hook bait needs goes. to be um, taken almost accidentally. It, it is definitely a, an advantage to have hook bait on, just yeah. in case you, your feeder gets disrupted and at least then you've got a hook bait to, to potentially catch a fish. But for your feeder to work correctly, for it to be that pile with your hook and hook bait in it, yeah. the fish is taking it by accident. Right, yeah, So yeah. you want a hook bait that goes in yeah. easily, Definitely. rather than a big heavy hook bait that's gonna, that the fish could reject or avoid. So I think that's where I've been going wrong in the past and fishing like two bigger baits and 20 millers and just having a laugh. It's like, I'm trying to get it. No, not but yet, I'm so joking. There's a time and a place for both. Definitely. That, with what yeah. we're gonna do today with loose feeding hard pellets, yeah. It's great because we can potentially put a hard pellet on the hook, yeah. have it loose out the feeder once it's all broken down and been washed about, but still get a bite because it's among hard pellets. Definitely, definitely. But if we were just to fish the feeder, maybe at range, which is a popular venue, um, popular method on here, then your hook bait becomes a little less important, but it still needs to be there and it yeah. still needs to be right. And that's where loading your feeder correctly and all that comes into it. We'll, we'll do that in a minute.